A torn rotator cuff is a common condition that can cause shoulder pain, weakness, and loss of mobility. If the tear is severe enough, surgical intervention is often necessary to repair the rotator cuff and to restore shoulder function. There are three bones that are involved in the shoulder, the humerus, the scapula, and the clavicle. The rotator cuff is made up of a group of four tendons and muscles that surround the shoulder joint. These muscles are the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor, and together they work to stabilize the joint and move the arm. A fluid-filled sac or bursa protects the tendons of the rotator cuff and allows them to slide smoothly as the arm moves. Rotator cuff tears occur when at least one of the cuff tendons is torn, fully or partially detaching the muscle from the humerus. These tears are most commonly caused by either cumulative injury through repetitive motions such as in throwing sports and weightlifting, or by a sudden or acute injury, such as a fall. Rotator cuff tears are common, more common in older patients, uh, middle-aged to uh, older patients. And uh, rotator cuff tears are really attritional in nature. Uh, they're more commonly, uh, they're less commonly traumatic. So uh, they're not necessarily, uh, I fell and injured my rotator cuff. It's more often that over time you're developing more shoulder pain and then more dysfunction. You'll notice that it hurts to do things, specifically overhead activity. Often it's painful at night. And then you'll notice maybe even some weakness with those activities. Surgical repair techniques vary depending upon your surgeon's preference, the severity of your tear, the tissue quality, and your individual anatomy. These techniques include open repair, mini open repair, and arthroscopic repair. This animation will explain the common arthroscopic repair. I think arthroscopic surgery is easier if you were trained that way, uh, to stick a camera into the shoulder, visualize the tendon, and then use other instrumentations and uh, other instrumentation and other um, hardware to repair the tendon back to place. An open procedure is making an incision and actually looking at the tendon. I think arthroscopic surgery gives you the advantage of seeing more in a small space than say an open procedure because the shoulder joint is, uh, it can be difficult to visualize. You're having to, in an open procedure, go through muscles and look down into a deep space, find the tendon that's torn and pull it out. Whereas arthroscopic, you're using a small camera to go through the muscle um, and you'll be able to see uh, much more of the anatomy. Yeah, I think there are do's and don'ts about what to do before surgery if you have a rotator cuff tear. You know, one of the things that's common is that people are getting cortisone injections to help their pain. In general, if you know you have a rotator cuff tear, it's probably better to not do cortisone injections because it can weaken the tendon. And that can make it tear into a bigger tear or it can make it more likely that your repair doesn't hold up. So once it's known that you need surgery, I would hold off on injections, uh, at least steroid type injections. There are other type injections like Toradol that is an anti-inflammatory medicine that you could do to buy time. Um, another thing that's really common is you get into this cycle of pain leading to decreased use, leading to stiffness. And that you can loop in that cycle a little bit and get stiffer and stiffer because you're not using your arm. And so if you, know, if you, you don't wanna go into rotator cuff surgery being stiff. So most surgeons will try to look at that and if a patient is a bit stiff, then preoperatively they'll put them on a home program or maybe even physical therapy to try to restore good rotational arc of motion so that when you do go in and repair the rotator cuff, uh, you don't wind up having a stiff shoulder. That, that, that's probably one of the worst complications uh, or more difficult things to deal with after having your rotator cuff repaired is if your shoulder gets too stiff. So you don't want to go into it stiff. Depending upon your preference and that of the anesthesiologist, you will be put under general anesthesia and or a nerve block. Your surgeon will make one or two small incisions around the shoulder joint. 
Next, a cannula will be inserted into the incision and saline solution will be injected in order to expand the joint to allow the placement of a small camera or arthroscope and surgical instruments. Once placed, the arthroscope will display images into a video monitor and your surgeon will use these images for guidance during the procedure. In order to provide more room to protect your repaired tissue, many surgeons will remove bone spurs from the underside of the bone above the joint, known as the acromion, which is part of the scapula. Your surgeon will remove severely damaged or scarred tissue from your torn tendon. Implants called suture anchors are then placed in order to secure the repaired tissue to the bone. Your surgeon will then pull the tissue over the top of the head of the humerus for reattachment. Typically, arthroscopic rotator cuff repair is performed in an outpatient facility, and you should be able to go home the same day. Pain and swelling after the procedure is normal and will decrease over time. You may be prescribed medication to manage your pain for the first few days and as needed. Um, our data is very clear that we used to start therapy far too soon and as a result had an unfortunately high rate of retear or incomplete healing. Our biology data is very specific in that it takes six weeks for early healing of the tendon to bone and three months for the strongest fibers called Sharpie's fibers to form. And as such, there's been a big movement over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, moving towards more of a delayed rehabilitation process, uh, allowing our bodies to just heal early on in a sling, not trying to stress the soft tissues, and starting closer to four to six weeks postoperatively, working into a more progressive range of motion, protocol, weaning the sling, and not starting strengthening until closer to two and a half to three months postoperatively. And so that's been a big change. Uh, and a lot of patients are, are used to hearing other patients have gone through early rehab and starting therapy within the first few days of surgery. And, and that's something that I spend a lot of time early on counseling my patients um, that it's better to actually wait a little bit longer. The timing of rotator cuff surgery is an important one. Um, for the most part, I would still try to exhaust conservative management for rotator cuff repairs, and I think there's an opportunity for many patients to treat them non-operatively with ice, anti-inflammatories, and a very significant physical therapy rehab protocol focusing on scapular stabilization and rotator cuff strengthening. And for many, they're able to achieve excellent range of motion, function, and strength, and we can often wait on any consideration of a rotator cuff repair. With that said, there is a concept that once the rotator cuff tears, it's not going to fully heal. It can grow in size, it can retract, atrophy, infiltrate with fat, and at some point may become irreparable. And that's a very significant problem um, to deal with long term in that we may lose an opportunity to fix it and we might have to rely on alternative strategies of addressing a rotator cuff tear in the future. Visit understandortho.com to watch medical animations and physician interviews about a wide range of orthopedic conditions, treatments, and surgery.